First thing I do is cast my cares and meditate on the word. And so what happens when you wake up in the morning, you wake up with all sorts of thoughts. You work a job, you leave that job, you got all this stuff on your mind. And you bring it to Bible studies, care groups, and, uh, outreach, ministry, everything else that's going on. And you, you're so distracted. Well, that's why when I wake up, the first thing I do, before I open up my mouth, as a matter of fact, a lot of times, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes may go by before I even open up my mouth to God. Some of you need to just be quiet for a while. As soon as we do, we just go, shut my mouth. During Christmas time, fa la 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 la. <laughs> uh huh. I, I'm serious. I right? just sit. This is what happens. I have a whole bunch of stuff in my mind that comes to my mind, my conscience. And I start weeding through that thing, how God, whatever, going to do, you know, I start applying the word of God, and I start casting stuff. I, you know, I, I cast this out of my, I cast that away, until my mind is completely cl clear. I'll meditate on his word, on his principle, what he want to do and everything else, and I'll spend that time first. And then I'll say, Father, I give myself to you. You're holy. You're awesome. Because now I got rid of all that stuff off my, out, out of my mind, and then I can pray. And then if I start praying and stuff come up in my mind, I start doing, okay, I'm going to take care of this. Because when I pray, when I, before I do warfare, I want to enter into that demilitarized zone where I get rid of all distractions. Worst thing you want to do is be distracted when you're in the, in the war, in the battle. That, that really helps me when I make sure I spend time casting and meditating on the word, the things of God. So some thoughts to come up as far as my day, what I need to do, different things that has transpired, something that happened yesterday. And I start thinking on, on really hard on something that happened, something someone did or something someone said. I start taking that word, and I start applying it to that. And you start doing that, guess what will happen? You'll start getting rid of that stuff instead of carrying that stuff in your day. And we carry a bunch of stuff in our day that, was, that didn't even have anything to do with our day. Something that happened yesterday, and we're bringing it all into our day. we all worn out. We're so weary. We're so tired. We don't even know why. I wake up. I'm so tired. That's because you woke up with all this stuff on your mind. You didn't cast those casts, and you didn't uh, get rid of that stuff, and you didn't meditate and meditate in the Word of God and everything else and enter into that place of prayer. Why? So you can do the will of God and find the purpose of God, the plan of God, and the peace of God, and you can't find the purpose, peace, and plan of God when you're carrying everything from yesterday today. And again, so you need that DMZ. That makes sense? This diminishes distraction, frustration, and confusion. I want to talk to you about the clock, because that's the, pop, the topic, the important thing. Clock, the clock factor. And I, I know I'm probably not clicking this enough, but let's see. The clock factor. I guess I'm on track. Clock management. You know, in football, you had that clock management. You know, some coaches, they know how to, you know, they know how to work the clock in football, basketball, baseball, not so much. But, uh, you know, you, had, you know how to work the clock. You know when to call the time out the right time. You know, you know how to work the clock, milk the clock and all that. Man, that's great in football. That's great in sports. But you can't milk the clock and stop the clock when you're doing this. So clock management is not, not. The idea of, you know, it's a man, clock management. There's no clock management. You know, the clock is the equalizer. What I mean by that is we all, someone, someone want to make excuses. Man, I, 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 it's so much going on my day. If my day is full, this, that, and the other. You know what? We all had the same amount of time in the day. 
You had 24 hours in a day. I got 24 hours in a day. Anybody got 25 hours in a day? Anybody has 10 hours in a day? No. The equalizer is we all have the same amount of time every single day. So nobody has an excuse or should have an excuse. So we all are affected by the clock. If you have two people that do, have the same responsibilities, one have a bunch of excuses why they can't do this, that, and the other, and then another is getting everything done. They're working uh, eight hours and everything else. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to brag a little bit. Not brag. I mean, what word I'm looking for? I'm going to uh, not brag. It's another word. See this, huh? What did you say? <laughs> you, you, see, you say what I think you say. Uh, uh, this sister right here. I tell you what. Now I know she uh, she works. With, is that social work stuff you do? Something like that. What's that? Social security. What is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> and some people, you know. <laughs> Well, I, I, I had to work. I had to do this. I had to do that. No, I, I never get an excuse for, excuse for my, something need to be done. I'm like, sometimes it blows my mind how much stuff. I'm like, whoa, my goodness. I, I asked for something. I mean, it's done yesterday. You ask somebody else to do something, you got to ask them 10 times before you get it. And we all had the same amount of time. We got 24 hours. It is, the only difference is some of us don't use our time wisely. Oh, let me, let me be nice. Some of us use our time wisely. So let's talk about this clock management. The definition, the, the, the definition of manage is to be in charge of, regulate, maintain, control over, Obviously, again, we don't do that. We don't manage the clock. It is impossible to manage the clock. It is impossible to take charge of the clock, to regulate, to maintain. You can't control, take control of the clock. It's going to tick no matter what. We can't manage the clock, but we can redeem the time. The Bible says we need to walk circumspectly and to redeem the time. The word circumspectly means to walk exactly and diligently. And redeem the time means to improve the opportunity and to rescue from loss. So he's saying the Holy Ghost is telling us that we need to, anybody having problems with it? So we're going to bring this thing. We have problems with our time consumption. Right, because we're worn out, because we got this responsibility. We have the natural, we got the, the job, then we have the spirit, whatever. Well, let me tell you something. If you learn how to redeem your time, you won't be as worn out. If you, if the word redeem means to buy back, buy that time. It, it, it means to take full opportunity of the time you have. To take full opportunity to rescue from loss. You don't want to have your time uh, at a, you don't, you want, you don't want to be at a loss with your time. And so you rescue time from a loss. It means to don't waste your time and don't let others waste your time. I, I'm telling you, too many times we waste time. And then now we don't have enough time or whatever because we just waste it. I'm sorry, I, my time is too precious. I don't feel like wasting my time. You know, some people just want to just talk this, that, and the other, and I don't, I don't have time for all that. I, I'm not one of those who, you know, want to go all through the ABCs and before I, no, I just want to get straight to the point. Half the time, I hate when I have to say good morning and this and that and how you feel and all, just to get to my point. Why don't I just say this? What are you, you supposed to be doing? Are you doing it? Just get to the point. But I have to do that just so I won't be taking wrong. I don't want to waste time. You already know I love you. I love you. <laughs> Here it is. This is for uh, 
up into the rapture. Good morning. <laughs> I got that out of the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or, or better yet, uh, how was your day? How was your day? That's just one of my pet peeves. Oh, my day was just wonderful. <laughs> Sometimes we, we just say stuff just to say it. I'm just using that, you know. Well, how was your day? We really don't really. Come on. I mean, fine. Ask me what I do today. Well, how was your day? Oh, it was lovely. Oh, good. Well, how was yours? It's just a waste of my breath, <laughs> waste of time. Oh, man, let me get on my subject. That's just one of my pet peeves, wasting my time with that. I'm going to tell you the way that you, uh, time management. Organization. If you're not organized, friend, you're, sure. oh, here we go. Organization. Structure. Documentation, writing stuff down. Now, I, 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 I beg to differ. I'm sorry I heard it, so I'm at to address it. Sorry, you should have been quiet. <laughs> Organization is not a gift. He said that he's not the author of confusion. And for us to do all things decently and in order. Organization is nothing but order. Now, we don't have to have an order of services for things to be in order. But, you, you know, we, you just can't wing it all the time. You got to prepare. Amen. You can't just wake up and say, okay, look at the flowers. Look at the grass. Oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, you have to structure your life. You have to have some organization. How can I find the will of God unless I try to have some structure within it? Oh, no, I'm following the Spirit. Which way did it go? No. You have to have prayer and devotion. You have to pray for God's will, purpose, strength, uh, wisdom and peace to be done in your life. You need to have these things. You need to redeem your time. It means to make full, take full opportunity of your time. The, the word circumspectly means to be diligent, exact. I sit and I figure out what I'm supposed to do that day. That's what you're supposed to do. What do I supposed to do that day? And you do it. Well, I got this, I got that. You know what? I don't spend my time worrying about this, that, and the other. As a matter of fact, when I have stuff that's just not on the table for the day, I try to get it out of my mind. Now, I use my calendar all the time for almost anything. Now, everything is on my, my personal calendar or whatever because I try to keep it far from my mind because I want the peace of God because I don't want to be anxious for nothing for tomorrow. Tomorrow will get here and take care of itself. I just want to know what, I, what I'm supposed to do now. Okay, what I'm supposed to do in a couple of hours, I want to go like that. We need to consider the times and seasons. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose which is under heaven. This is important, folks. Why this is important? Because timing is everything. Timing is everything. To everything there is a season and a time for, for every single thing. Before I get it to commit, commit it to committing, so I'm going to take that off because you're going <laughs> There is a, the scripture says there's a season for everything. Let me just say, we must find the will of God every single day. Are you seeking the will of God every day? There is an appointed season for everything. And all I have to do is know what season I'm operating in. There's a, a time for everything. All I have to do is know what time I'm supposed to be doing what. That's That's easy. What time do I supposed to be on my job? What days I supposed to be on my job? Some days I don't supposed to be on my job. Some days I supposed to call off.
And a lot of times when I call off, it's probably not just so I can kick back and do nothing. I said sometimes. We need to learn when it's time to rest. We need to learn when it's time for leisure. We need to learn when it's time to take vacations. We need to learn when it's time to do, take, do tasks. We need to learn when it's time to do nothing. Sometimes it's time to do absolutely nothing, and God is wanting to see you. Now, I'm not talking about all the time. Keep your hand down. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had a teenager, right? I don't know if you're still a teen. Raise your hand. It's time to do nothing. That's 24 7. No, 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 no. That's a time. I'm just messing. That's a time to do nothing. I'm serious. And some of us, we get so busy because we have to do something. We have to find ourselves. We, get, we become busy bodies when it's not even time to do something. We, we get, no, sometimes it's just time to sit back and just fold your arms and just think. Just be quiet. Just be still. Maybe you can hear the voice of God. We can't even do that sometimes. And we want to be able to walk in the Spirit. Sometimes. Now, you know what happens. Sometimes our schedule gets interrupted. You ever have a schedule and it gets interrupted? Now, interruptions in your schedule are sometimes scheduled interruptions. You get all messed up because your schedule got interrupted. But sometimes, guess what? When your schedule gets interrupted, that was a scheduled interruption. Because God said, hey, it's not time to do this. And I have to interrupt your schedule because this is the time and this is the season. And so when you learn to do these things, timing is important. What did he tell you? He said, hey, you didn't know the time of your visitation. Therefore, you know what? This desolation is coming upon you. Your city is going to be compassed with enemies and everything else. They're going to cast you in the trench. They're going to do all these things. Evil is coming your way, Jesus told the, the uh, people in Jerusalem. He said, because you didn't even know your time of visitation. You're so busy doing this, that, and the other. You didn't know I, it was the time for me to show up. You, you all caught up in your thing, your world, and everything else. Don't even know what time it is. You have to find out. Timing is so critical. And if you have trouble and you needed this, this uh, lesson, I'm telling you what, one of the things is just knowing when you're supposed to do something, how long, whatever. I have a thing, okay, I'm going to the building. I'm going for two hours. I'm done after two hours, so that's my time. And, you know, sometimes we overextend ourselves. And we make promises to people. Because we're like Saul, we care about the people. And Saul, he kept on trying to please people so much he couldn't please God. And you, 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 do, you do all these things to try to please people, and you're not trying to find out the will of God. Because if you keep trying to please people, you'll get out of the will of God. And then you get frustration and confusion and everything else. You, gotta, you have to find the will of God. Amen. I'm going to move on from that. Committed to, commit, committed to committing. What is that? I'm going to tell you, this is going to help most of you. If you're in ministry, raise your hand. You lead, raise your hand. You use the God, raise your hand. Anyway. Committed to <coughs> committing. What is that? Paul said, this, Paul said it this way. He said, I want you to commit. I'm going to read it so you can, you can turn to it if you want to. 2 Timothy uh, 2, 1 and 2 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ, and the things which thou hast heard among many uh, witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. He said, you need to take what you had, what's been taught to you, and you need to commit it to somebody else. You need to commit these things to somebody else. Paul didn't say, you know, Paul was the man. He didn't say, you know what, I can do this thing all by myself. He said, you know what, I know what I need to do. I need to commit this stuff to somebody else. And when I commit it to you, you got to commit it to somebody else. You have to be committed to committing. Or else you're going to be burnt out. 
So I mean, well, you know what? I'm worn out. I, I can't get this job done. There's nobody. I'm the only one who's doing anything. The only reason why you're the only one who's doing anything because you don't want to give somebody else the opportunity to do it. You got to recruit. Recruitment reduces responsibilities. I got too many responsibilities. Start recruiting somebody else to help you. Now, I, it, there shouldn't be a person in here who's working, who, who had not worked close with me, who, who, who couldn't tell you that I tell you all the time, get some help, get somebody, get some help. Don't do all the work. Delegate. Teach, train, and trust. You got to teach people, if you're all worn out, if you're burnt out, you're not teaching people, you're not training people, and you're not trusting people. Because you got to trust them to mess up, make mistakes, and, until they get it right. Oh, hallelujah, anyhow. And you got to replicate. We're replicators. You got to replicate yourself. I didn't say duplicate, I said replicate. You can't be duplicated, but you can be replicated. You got to learn to delegate. You got to learn to replicate. What that means, once you, you got to meet your match. So we don't want that. We don't want to find somebody that can do it just as good as we can do it, just as well as we can do it. Right? Oh, no, they may top me. You got to meet your match and search for your successor. And if you're not doing that, you're worn out in ministry. You're not doing that, you're, you're, you, you know what, uh, uh, God's hand is probably against you. Is this helping anyone? Uh, it's not hurting anyone. Uh, anyone hurt? All right, I'm going to talk about the conditions of your heart real quickly. Conditions of your heart. That's the next thing I'm going to talk about. These are all things that are supposed to help you, hopefully, prayerfully. So we're going to talk about the calculative condition. Jesus said this, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You got to have your heart right, folks, in this thing. If you don't have your heart right trying to be involved in the things of God, you're going to get, man, you, you're going to be messed up. You're going to look at the past all cross-eyed. Right? When he walk away, I mean, when he's right facing, you're going to roll your eyes at him? Right. And grit your teeth? Mm. That pastor will wear you out. I ain't wearing anyone out. But where your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. I hate to use the word successful, but if you want to be successful in God, guess what? It starts with where your treasure is. It's calculative. You pull out the calculator, see how much. See, it's about your value system. Your value system is very vital. So your value system will determine whether you're going to be able to uh, be involved in the things of God with a good attitude, positive attitude, or whether it's going to be just a chore. It shouldn't be a chore. I mean, look, look passing is, is it's, it's work. And I, I know I fool around and say, whoo we," You know, but I, I, I'm thankful for God's calling. It's not a chore. It's not grievous. But where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if your treasure is after the things of God, guess what? You're going to do it with joy. You may get tired sometimes, but guess what? That's only physical. And as long as I'm not just in the physical, temporal, natural man, guess what? I'm going to get the strength I need. In the mornings, I'm, I pray, God, give me your strength. Pray for help. Strength over my bodies, over my body. God will get me through. But your value system determines where you invest your time. You will start doing less things in God. You will participate less in God, less in the, uh, uh, gatherings and everything else. You'll find yourself pulling away from the things of God based on what you value. Now, some of us value the opinion of others.
Your value system is going to help you in this balancing act. So if, that, if, if you're, where your treasure is, there your heart is going to be also, you have to do something to guard your heart. So your heart won't be drawn away to other sources. We're, we're, we're wrapping this up. The Bible says to guard your heart, go keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You got to guard your heart to protect it and maintain it. If you don't, there are dangers in an unguarded heart. These are some of the dangers. Grudges. We, we're going we're gonna to do a little quick uh, self-examination. You, if you have trouble with grudges, it's probably because you haven't guarded your heart. Oh, it, because somebody did this. I got a grudge against them because of what they, no, no one can do something to you to cause you to have a grudge. Because if you have a grudge, that means your heart wasn't guarded. So whatever they did to you, if your heart was guarded, it wouldn't affect you. Offenses, bitterness, misguided thinking, and deception. All those are the dangers of having an unguarded heart. What does this have to do with me being involved in ministry and, and my secular whatever? Because if you don't have that, if you don't guard your heart, friend, I'm telling you what, you'll have times where you know what, you don't want to even be involved with some of the stuff in the church. And then you'll give yourself more, you look forward to being involved in your natural man more than your spirit man. You'll start investing your time because it's where your treasure is. You'll start investing your time. You'll start, uh, you know what, you, you start spending more time with people that are not in the church than people that are in the church. That's an unguarded heart. The heart must be routinely examined and regularly purged. You got to spend time saying, God, search me, try me. But you know what? It's, it's one thing if you say, God, search me, then he's trying to tell you what's going on. I don't want to hear that. No, that's not me, because this is it. You know, this is what will happen. God, show me my heart. Show me what's going on. Somebody come and say something to you. No, that's not it. Another person to come and say something to you. No, that's not it. Somebody will, will speak to you a word of wisdom and prophesy or pray over you. No, that's not it. You ask God to show you your heart, but you're rejecting every time God's trying to send somebody your way to try to tell you something. Now I want to hear it. It's like the man that was, there was a flood, jumped on his roof. You heard the story. And, and he said, no, no, God, God's going to save me. Somebody came by in the rowboat. Hey, come on, get along. No, I trust in God. He's going to save me. All right, bye. God sends somebody else the next thing, no. Oh, no, no, send a raft, whatever. I'm fine. God said he was going to save me. Water's getting higher, getting higher. Next thing you know, root, the water's up at the rooftop. Helicopter uh, come down, drop the ladder. Oh, no, no, you go right ahead. I don't want that God. God is going to save me. Blah, 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 blah. Angry at God. What do you do this for? I was trusting you. I sent three people. To give you, to tell you what you needed to hear. You didn't want to hear it. Mm. <laughs> Woo. So you have to have your heart purged and examined. It's a clean heart. David said, created me a clean heart. What did I have to do with being involved in Ministry and balancing, because you're not you're not going to be able to balance your, again, getting rid of the this, the, the misnomer. You're not going to have that balanced life if your heart is all messed up, because you're going to feel like God is unfair to you. You're doing all this work for for God, and God is not giving anything in return. God is being unfair. I'm the only one who's doing any work around here. 
Hey, I, you know, pastor putting all this responsibility uh, over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, um, I'm not being recognized for the work that I do. I'm not getting enough pats on the back. I'm, 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 I'm just not going to do anything. They don't ask, I won't do it. And the problem with that, with that type of attitude, you know, you, I, if they don't ask, I won't do it. The only way you do something around here is that you know, you won't do any volunteering. Yeah, I'm speaking. You, don't, you won't volunteer for anything if somebody don't ask you. I try to stop asking people because I always want to see, are they going to volunteer? Like, we've been doing some work. I'm waiting to see for some people to show up. I Guess what? I'm waiting for every leader. If you're a leader and you hadn't done anything in this round of work, work except for you came here to do, some, do, the, do the cleaning, and then you kind of help out, no, you didn't volunteer. If you're a leader, you're supposed to serve. Oh, I, I know it's quiet in here now. You won't go back and, 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 and listen to this uh, by way of Australian internet, will you? I'm going to fast forward that part. <laughs> Clean heart is important in this. Here's, here are some attributes of a, that accompany a clean heart. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. And here's some attributes that accompany that. And renew a right spirit. You get a right spirit when you have a clean heart. And he says, he went on and says, and, and cast me not away from thy presence. You get God's presence when you have a clean heart. You call it heart and clean, you can't feel the presence of God. You don't have a right spirit when your heart is not right. And he says, uh, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You get the spirit of God moving and operating. You can't be sensitive to the spirit when your heart is not right. How are you going to be able to have that balance your heart is not right? Oh, hallelujah. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I'm telling you what, your heart is not right. You're not going to have any joy. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted. Now I'm being used in God. I'm released to teach people, win people, and everything else, and be involved in the things of God. I'm concluding with this. You never thought it would be done. I was afraid to look at the clock because I was going to get through this no matter what. I can tell it's late. I can always tell just by your physical, temporal attributes. Some of you are screaming, I want to go home. I want my natural man. Get in the spirit. And guess what? He was like, this will help solve some of my problems. This will this help me. Maintaining, I'm going to talk to you real quickly about pursuing a proper balance as we go. It's about priority and uh perspective. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. If you're not seeking the kingdom of God first, like we talked about this past week, Sunday, I believe, if you're not seeking the kingdom of God first, you can forget about feeling being balanced. See, there, there is no balance when you're not seeking God's kingdom. You wake up, you pop up, you got to do the stuff that you have to do. You do this day in, day out, week in, week out, about your deal. Okay, it's time to pray when the pastor says it and time to do this when it's scheduled and, and you're not operating in personal devotion and time and everything else. Guess what? You're not going to have, it's, things, are not, things are never going to feel right. You're going to always have that imbalance. My wife, is, have, she hadn't suffered long with it. Uh, recently with it, I'm sorry, but she would have vertigo. You know, it looked like, you know, things are moving and all that. I've had, had it when it, I was sick or if you had a flu or whatever or virus or whatever. You just, things are just moving and all that. That's so uncomfortable. And some of us, we walk around like that. It's just this imbalance. Well, you're not going to have proper balance until you have, have your priorities set and have your perspective in order. 
and that's God's first. He's everything in between, and he's last. I said he's God first, he's everything in between, and he's last. You said, when he's going to allow me, he'll give you yours. He said, you seek me, you'll get what you need. So when you're doing my will, guess what? He's going to give you time to rest. Seek my will, he's going to give you time to vacate. But we want to be on vacation all the time. Okay, that's not going to work that way. Another thing is com uh, contentment. We need to examine, we need to do a contentment examination. Am I content in the state that I'm in? If you're not content with where you are, folks, you're going to just be out of whack. If you're always trying to figure out what you don't have, if your whole thought process is something you don't have, you're going to be out of, you, you're just going to be out of alignment. You maintain a proper balance through rest and recuperation. Know when it's time to rest, folks. You all worn out. Chances are you didn't rest when you should have rest. It was time for you to rest, and you was trying to do this, that, and the other. You wanted to stay up. You wanted to, you know, talk. You wanted to do whatever, and you didn't get to rest when it was time for you to rest. Now, I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking outside of medical conditions, all right? Sometimes it's time to recuperate. But I'm going to tell you something. If you, if you recuperate all the time, your body will get lazy. And then when it's time to work, you don't feel like doing it. That's because you've been recuperating too much. Recuperate means you've been active. You have, you're going to need times of replenishment, times of restoration. Know when it's time to be replenished. Know when it's time to be restored. Allow God to do that in your life. Uh, observation and obedience. You're going to have to be obedient to the voice of God, hearkening and listening, trying to find out when it is the will of God to do this, when is the will of God to do that. You, sometimes you just got to, again, settle your spirit, settle down, try to find out. And if you try, work your own plan, do your own thing, good luck with that. Last two items, caring. You're supposed to care, but don't, you don't supposed to carry. Some of us are carrying, thing, carrying things that we don't supposed to carry. And sometimes we care so that sometimes we think we're supposed to carry. I'll tell you, I care for you. I do what I, I minister. My wife would tell you, I'm not carrying, I'm not carrying anybody's stuff. And some of us, when you're involved in ministry, you carry people's stuff around. Some of us are carrying stuff around in our job. You're supposed to care, but don't carry. And lastly, again, end being overcommitted and overextended. Some of us are good at doing budgets. Some of us are not good at doing budgets. You need to become good at budgeting your time so you can re redeem the time. Because some of us are, you know what, <laughs> if we treat our uh, time and things we have that like we, if we treat our finances like we do with that, we'll be in bankruptcy court. We'll be, uh, you know, high in, in debt. Maybe some of us are. <laughs> because we get overextended. And overcommit it. And if you overcommit yourself, this is not going to work. Again, I'm asking you leaders. That's why I, was, I would ask you, do you need help? Get yourself some help. Don't try to do it all on your own. We don't need long ranges. Don't, over, don't, don't overdo it. And if you don't overdo it on one end, and then you can go on your job and have the proper uh, uh, mindset and everything else on your job and take God with you on your job, it won't be so hard to work him up. 
when you come here and there's a balance, you won't be frustrated all the time. You won't be worn out. You won't get burnt out. And you can live that life that God is calling you to live. It doesn't mean that sometimes you won't, you know, there's a, a great push. And, man, we had services here. We had back-to-back -back there, back-to-back -back there. But that's not all the time. But then that's when the recuperation and the rest will kick in. Won't you stand, please? So after this long, long message and long, long lesson, you can go home and get some recuperation and some rest. Now, let me tell you this. I knew this was a long uh, session. I don't need somebody, well, that was long. I knew it was long. <laughs> have you anyone, have anyone here ever sit in on any bishop sessions? So this is not long. <laughs> right? This is not long. But I knew this would take two sessions, but I also felt like it was important. I know it's a lot of information. Why did I give you all this information? Because there were different points, different factors, different situations. Some of it apply to you, some of it doesn't. Uh, uh, this will be available uh, for you if you want to go back, not because of me or whatever. I'm just saying I think there's some material that can help you. I, there, it's only six slides. Uh, but I also have the, the full set of notes. If anyone wants it, you can just email me. I will send you the notes. I'll send you the slides. Again, obviously, you can watch it uh, when it's posted. Um, I know some of you were tired, so I would say if you came in here, you were tired, maybe sleepy, whatever. Um, teaching is not, hopefully, neither teaching nor preaching is to entertain, but the teaching is not to arouse you. And sometimes we need arousal by preaching. But um, again, if you, no matter whether you work a, a secular job or just trying to do your, just go about life. And you're involved and wanting to be involved in the things of God. And there seems to be this battle, or, you know, if you will. Um, these are some of the principles that I believe that are in the Word of God, principles that I've applied and tried to use and others have tried to use and apply it. And, um, and prayerfully, it will be beneficial to you. Why don't you just lift your hands where you are? If it's too late, I do apologize. Well, it's not, we didn't go too bad, too far over. So I, I feel good about the time. It's not, it's not too bad. Come on, we'll begin to pray. Why don't you go ahead and lift your voices up just a little. I know you're we had, we, we've been doing this for 20 minutes. Well, I started at 7.20, roughly. Didn't start teaching until a little thereafter. So this is a two-hour segment, which I figured it would be. If any of this uh, applies to you, any of this uh, will help you in your walk, your life, on your job, this balancing act that we talked about, come on, why don't we just talk to the Lord just for a few more moments. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah.